What's up, everybody? I'm Jack Slater, a.k.a. the Comic Outlaw. Yeah, yeah. And we're going back to the Fantastic Four. Old school. Yeah, yeah. Number 92, Fight News. Ben Grimm is going to go one-on-one -on -one against an alien called Trogo in a slave planet run by the Skrulls who based this planet on 1930 gangster movies. Yes, you heard me correctly. So let's get on with this convoluted story. Anyways, Ben Grimm sitting there, you know, kind of enjoying what meal that he has, trying to figure out a way to get out of this. Meanwhile, these goofballs with guns, and keep in mind, those aren't Tommy guns. Those are real laser pistol guns, enough to subdue Ben. So now Ben and his new cellmate, the guy that he's supposed to fight to the death, are being moved out, they're being moved to process, and most of all, they're being moved to train, and uh, they kind of want to gauge what Ben's strength is and how he's going to match up against his fighter so they can accurately place their bets. But of course, the minute they let Ben loose, he tries to take a shot at them, but those guns are pretty effective against Ben. He decides to keep cool for a while until he gets his opportunity to break out. Now, Ben may not be the brightest bulb in the bunch, but Ben has a lot of street smarts, and he knows how to bide his time. Meanwhile, he's fighting against this little magnet man. Now, apparently this guy has some kind of a telekinesis, and he's uh, knocking Ben back and forth. And I think it, it has more to do with telekinesis than magnetic powers because Ben is not made of steel, and he's alternating gravity right now by pushing the force down on Ben. But Ben's dealt with this situation before, and uh, Ben shakes the ground in order to knock him off his footing, and more importantly, to disturb his powers. Like I said, at this point, Ben's a veteran. He knows how to fight. Meanwhile, everyone else is conducting the final searches for Ben just in case he's on Earth. They've come up short, and uh, they go to the laboratory where Reed is, of course, already working on a flying saucer. And uh, he's getting into a debate with Sue, and he flat out tells her that she's not coming. She's the mother of his child in case something happens to him, Johnny and Crystal, and Ben. She still needs to raise their child. And through all his devices, Reed is able to determine where Ben is. And this is the genius of Reed. He could take something simple and just build. Man could take a paper clip and turn it into a death ray. Anyways, uh, as I said, Ben is training, knocking out opponent after opponent. And of course, Ben is getting tired of being a slave and getting tired of having to deal with these guys. But their weapons just outclass him. They knock him out. I mean, with... A blast of that gun they made him powerless for that dude just to slap him anyways they put a hydro press on him just to test his strength just to see how strong he is now keep in mind these things are used to knock down buildings and Ben is just easily able to shred it but of course this makes Ben weak taking a blast and then having to do that so he has to bide his time he has to wait for his opportunity he can't just go its clobbering time because those weapons will take him down quicker than anything. And he doesn't exactly have a ship to get off planet either. But anyways, these guys start spreading the word that the games are going to begin. Now, I think the way it works with these mob guys is they all have different families. And they try to betray each other. They try to shoot each other. There's no uh, trust in the Squirrel Mafia, I guess. Case in point, bomb goes off, tries to take out one of the opponents... They just ignore it like it's nothing. And then they all show up to the arena, ready to place their bets. And I guess this is the way their society works. I mean, they based it all on the movies, so. They uh, show up, you know, they get pat down. And of course, they mentioned the explosion like it was nothing. You know, like, oh, well, I casually tried to kill you. Oh, well, it didn't work. There's always tomorrow. You know, that kind of thing. You know, saying it without saying it. Anyways, this is the most motley crew of Mafia souls I've seen in a long time. They look like they just come out of a Dick Tracy comic book. I mean, U-G-L-Y, they ain't got no alibi. They ugly, you know. Eesh. Moving on. Thing is not having a good day. He's back in his cell. And he's trying to convince this guy that they ought to smash their way out together. But this guy is fully drinking the Squirrel Kool-Aid. 
He says that he's a slave. He's here to fight. And he's here to destroy Ben Grimm. That's his only purpose because if he loses or if he even fights back, the Skrulls say that they will destroy their home world. So this is this guy's motivation. He doesn't want his home world destroyed. And this is a whole new can of worms for Ben. I mean, even if they do a revolt, I mean, some of their planets might be destroyed. That's a lot of life. And do the Skrulls have the technology to do this? There's a lot of questions here that Ben's trying to figure out as they're leading him to the arena. Now, I wouldn't underestimate Ben, but he's in a bad situation here. Ben's trying to get out of this. The robot explains to him again that they will lose their planets if they resist. And Ben has to change his strategy, trying to figure out what it is he's going to do. And he just may have to fight. So anyways, they're in the arena. They're having these different fighters come in with different weapons. And they're placing their bets. Typical arena behavior. Except it's 1930s gangsters instead of Romans. On a scrawl planet. Far, far away. Like I said, convoluted. Anyways, these guys start their fight. And Ben is hoping for a miracle. He's hoping that someone will come and rescue him. The Reed is on the way. And matter of fact, Reed is on the way. They took off in their flying saucer. But will they get there in time to save Ben? Will Ben be able to escape the slave planet? Well, we'll find out the next time, won't we? And I'll catch you on the flip side. Yeah.